The Maya civilization began around the year 250 and lasted for more than a thousand years. Located on the Yucatan Peninsula, the Maya were a group distinct from the neighboring Aztecs and distant Incas. These groups are often lumped together because of a few shared traits, but they are actually quite different. The Maya power was spread across many different city-states and each acted in their own self-interest. These groups are not unified by a central power, but instead by language, culture, and religion. Throughout the time of their civilization, city-states rose and fell. Most notably, a great societal collapse occurred in the 9th century. But how do we know this? Was this passed down from generation to generation orally until Europeans arrived? No, in fact, the Maya themselves preserved their history by writing it down in books of their own design, by chiseling it into rock, or by painting it onto ceramics. The history of the Maya is complex and, until recent breakthroughs in Mayan glyphology, relatively unknown. The knowledge needed to make sense of the Maya glyphs is thought to be lost in 1697 with the fall of the last city-state, Nopetan. Until Yuri Knorozov made a breakthrough in translating glyphs in the mid-20th century, the information encoded in these symbols is simply unknown. Translation has progressed quite rapidly thanks to many others in the field of Mayanology since Knorozov's discovery. Apparently, more than 60% of Mayan writing can be understood and translated. However, after many hours spent poring over online resources, I have not been able to find a satisfying translation for a single Mayan book. Translations do exist of some small carvings, but they all leave something to be desired. Online translations for three of the four Mayan codices are simply quick summaries of the information, and the fourth book contains no actual writing, only complex mathematical work. I want an in-depth analysis of each page of the codices. However, as of this video, this does not exist. So I set out to try my own hand at it. I bought a Mayan glyph book and sat down to translate. Shockingly, I was relatively successful. In this video, I'd like to share this translation with you as well as explain its flaws and show you how to translate for yourself. The Mayan script is an incredibly intricate writing system that rivals the complexity of the Japanese writing system and even that of Egyptian hieroglyphics. To start, there are three general types of Mayan glyphs, pictograms, syllabograms, and hybrids. Pictograms are relatively straightforward, representing an object or a concept, a place, or any other concrete idea. Take, for example, the glyph Aha, which depicts the head of a ruler and means simply ruler. The glyph Ba'alam also illustrates this, showing the head of a jaguar to represent, well, a jaguar. Syllabograms are a little bit more complex. In a syllabogram, each element represents a syllable. So to write Aha, a scribe would need to write A, Ha, Wa. Notice the last glyph segment is written as a syllable Wa, but is not spoken like this. Instead, the final a ah matches the vowel of the preceding syllable. Pa'alam can be written similarly as pa'alama. Hybrids are a mix between pictograms and syllabograms. A hybrid will include a main pictographic element that carries most of the meaning of the glyph, but also includes one or more syllabic elements. For example, to write aha as a hybrid, a scribe would combine the pictogram for aha with a syllable or syllables that support the reading. As such, aha would become aha wa, but alam could be transformed into a hybrid in the same way. This is straightforward enough, but it doesn't stop there. Each syllable typically has several different forms, and each pictogram also has several different forms. This makes the number of possible combinations for writing a single glyph insanely high. Let's look at the example of aha again. It has several known pictographic spellings. There are five known ways to write the syllable a, ah, there are four known ways to write the syllable ha, and there are six known ways to write the syllable wa. This means that there are potentially 120 different ways to write out aha using syllables alone. And this count does not include hybrid spellings. If you were to include potential hybrid spellings and pictographic spellings, then the number of combinations would total 414. 414 different ways to write a single word. Complicating things further is the Mayan language itself. The Maya hieroglyphs record a now extinct language that has only survived by a few miscellaneous descendants. The grammar of these descendants has changed significantly from the time of the classical Mayan language. Glyphs are mostly written in the classical Mayan language. However, writing does exist in Yucatec Mayan. The primary difference between these forms of writing is the hybrid and syllabic spellings of glyphs. For example, in classical Mayan, the word snake is written as cha-chan, while in Yucatec Mayan is written as ka -kan. Now that we understand the basics of how glyphs work, let's take a look at my translation. For translating, I use the Dictionary of Maya Hieroglyphs by John Montgomery, 
as well as an early dictionary of Mayan words. I chose to translate a segment of text on the second page of the Paris Codex. Unfortunately, most of the glyphs on this page are unreadable due to the age of the document. There is, however, a small segment of glyphs that remain readable. Mayan glyphs are read in a left-to-right zigzagging order. Starting with the first glyph, the order goes right, then down and back, then down and back again, over and over until the reader reaches the end of the column. At this point, the text continues at the top of the next column, each two glyphs wide. In the Paris Codex, the word order would be as follows, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on to the end of the page. The first glyph in the codex is a pictogram depicting a coiled snake. The word for snake is typically pronounced chan in classical Mayan. However, the Paris Codex is likely written in Yucatec Mayan due to its origin on the far end of the Yucatan Peninsula, far from the historic classical Mayan speakers. For this reason, it is likely pronounced Khan. Next is a more complex glyph with three components. Here, the main component is Tun. The glyphs on the left side and the bottom appear at first glance to be the same symbol, but upon further inspection, it becomes clear that they are in fact different. The component on the left hand side is Ka. Next, the component on the bottom is pronounced Li. At this point, I was forced to stop and move on to the next glyph, because I could not find a suitable translation for this word. It's either Katunil or Katunli. Luckily, the meaning of this glyph became clear upon further translation. The next glyph has two main segments. The leftmost segment is pronounced Yu, meaning he, she, or it. The face is pronounced Kam in Yucatec Mayan, and means something like death, dead, or die. The little dots below are phonetic clues, pronounced Ma. The meaning of the middle component is unclear, but may be an undocumented phonetic clue, ka or cha, which would clear up the language confusion. However, as of right now, it is unknown. It could also refer to tense, turning die into dead. The next glyph consists of three elements. The center is a pictogram pronounced winal, and represents the Mayan month of 20 days. The component stacked above is likely a syllabic symbol pronounced wi. However, it may be some unknown grammatical symbol. On the bottom is also a syllabic symbol, ta which is a preposition meaning in, at, with, or to. Unfortunately, here is where the translation begins to break down. The next three characters are damaged and cannot be fully read. I have attempted to decode them by translating their components individually. The following is what I have found. At this point, I began to search through Old Mayan to Spanish dictionaries and other resources to try to find words in Mayan that were similar to the sounds in the glyphs. By some stroke of luck, I was able to find a word pronounced catunil, which fit the second glyph in the context almost perfectly, meaning battle if it fits into the existing sentence well. Additionally, the eighth and last readable glyph in the sentence refers to the 19th day in the Maya calendar. The translation, as far as I could translate it, reads as follows, Kan katunil yukam winauta, something, 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 kawak, meaning the snake died in the battle in the month of unknown on the 19th day, more unknown text. Due to the limits of translation, a further decipherment of this text will be difficult or impossible because of our lack of further examples of Mayan writing, and because of the limits in our knowledge of the Mayan languages. Perhaps this is why no definitive translation of any Mayan books exist. The translations can only grasp the general idea of the text, but cannot fully translate all of the individual bits and pieces.